Oh, there's a house in here. <clears throat> yeah, we're coming up. This is Almanac Pond Road, and we're coming up to uh, Windswept Cranberry Buck. Here's a, yeah, this is a nice little path. We'll go Yeah, here's here. a nice little path. Oh, That's good. This will be perfect. Then. This is where we'll finish it. <laughs> So this is, uh, this is an oak, this is a white oak, and you can tell from the, the shape of the tree, um, the fact this is a slightly upland area, but as you look at all the ferns around it, you get an idea of the moisture content of the soil. So we're right here, this is uh, the edge of sort of the back part of windswept cranberry bog off the Pulpus Road. And there's this wonderful little trail here. Now, where we are, again, this is the so-called hidden forest part of the island. And you'll see these, most of these uh, trees here are tupelo, very straight trunk with very fine horizontal branches on it. It's the tree that gives Nantucket its sort of color in the fall. You know, it, it's, as you can see, they're sort of beginning, well, actually, they're sort of going by now. But the, the three main trees that we'll find in here are the, the tupelo or the black gum, uh, this is a swamp red maple over here, the one that's sort of going off in all different directions, and there's another one down here. And then you'll see this trail. This is typical of the trails um, that crisscross this whole area. We actually, you could actually pick wild blueberries. Oh yeah, you? oh yeah. Uh, as I say, there are three native plants to North America. We have all three here on Nantucket. The blueberry, cranberry, and the fox grape. And blueberries, it's mostly the low bush blueberries yeah, that are all over the moors and so on. But also in these wet areas, we have uh, quite a few sands of these high bush, high Do bush blueberries. different? I think they do. I think that the high bush are a little bit sweeter, and I'm not sure if that's just a personal, you know, whatever. But uh, uh, I, th I think they're 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 a little bit plumper, you know, and they 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 tend tend to be a little bit sweeter. Let's see. This is a white oak. We have white oaks, black oaks. Um, there's a, uh, some red oak out here, but those are those are the oak trees. Most of the oaks and so on are in these higher areas. You notice that as we go down even just a few feet in elevation into some of the wetland areas here that the tree species change. And it's because of, you know, they're sp specifically adapted to growing in these wetland areas. We have over 70 different species of ferns here on Nantucket. So now, this is, we're in a wetland area. This is all sort of swampy and marsh. And this is the basic plant. It's a sphagnum moss. It's an amazing plant. It grows from the top, dies from the bottom. And this plant is responsible for many of the very unique characteristics of these wetland areas here. What happens is that as the plant sort of decays back on itself, it forms uh, beds of peat. And peat is you know, basically organic material that hasn't completely decomposed. It's also, um, be because of these peat beds, the water will accumulate, it will form these, uh, form these little puddles, these marshes and bogs around here. And over time, as the plant matter decays back on it, it becomes very acid. Just to give you an idea, normal pH is 7. A glass of orange juice, which we would normally consider pretty acid, is five. This has uh, these bogs in here have a pH as low as three. It's about ten thousand times more acid than a normal pH of seven. So again, it encourages very unique or a unique group of plants to uh, are allowed to grow in here because of this this plant. The plant is like a huge sponge. Uh, it can absorb up to 25 times its weight in water. And what happens, you get a day like this, you know, or a week like this where we've had a lot of rain, it just sort of soaks it all up, and then it will uh, release it slowly over time. There are five sort of running streams that I've discovered around here, and uh, they're all because of this plant. You know, as it releases the water, it, uh, you have some of these 
running stream. So this is this is one of the basic plants, and you can tell as you get down the vegetation changes. That's a swamp red maple, as is this here. All the green, by the way, and the plants are lichens, and all of these plants, the ferns and so on, are adapted to growing in these wetland areas. They're just, just fascinating, the plants that you find in here. Now so you now where does this trail go to? This trail will eventually go over to uh, Stump Pond and then to Windswept Cranberry Bog. It's all part of... How long of, is it? Uh, this trail is maybe half a... Well, it connects to it. There's another loop of trail. So, depending on where you're going, it's from here over to Windswept, maybe half a mile, a little less than that. But there's a whole system of trails in just this one property. I would say uh, probably three or four miles of trails. We have an easterly edge trail that goes around uh, Stump Pond, goes over to Keith House, the ranger station. There's a loop trail that goes in the center of Stump Pond, and then this one sort of connects to it. So. And you said. Uh, how many miles of trails could you walk? Just in this one property, there are probably three or four miles of trails. Uh, in total? And uh, all said? over the moors, I would, there are more than 20 miles of trails. Oh, nice. 20 miles of trails. You know, um, 15 years ago when you took this job, mm -hmm. before that you were a very enterprising type of person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't see yourself going back to that? I mean, you did real no. estate, you <laughs> no. did businesses. Yeah. You, now you do this. Well, why? What's what happened that well, made you to just do this kind of? I, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, I've always loved being outside. I mean, even as a kid, I remember um, growing up in Ohio. I used to love to walk the train tracks. I mean, I would walk for miles in the country, and I would have to force myself to turn around and go back. And you know, so I, I I've always loved. Being outside, being in nature, I've always been sort of curious about nature. I enjoy being alone. I mean, I'm good at entertaining myself. Um, I don't need a lot of social social activity. So this is, it just seems like an ideal situation for me to, to do this. It allows me the free time to play my guitar, to do the things that I like to do, to read to explore nature, to learn about it, and to just be a part of the environment. Um, one of the other things I do, I'm one of the five land bank commissioners, and I think my, tr I won't say training, but my experience here as the ranger uh, has really made me ideally suited for it, because I know every, well, I won't say every deer trail, but I know a lot of the deer trails. I know every road. I've walked all the beaches. I know all the ponds, and I have a picture of Nantucket. I mean, I see how different ecosystems interact with each other. Um, and I think that that's been helpful as far as, you know, trying to figure out which properties and uh, there are certain properties that, that uh, bring to the attention of the land bank that, okay. you know, this is something that... But, uh, but you're more interested in conservation than you are in, you know, oh, absolutely. selling oh, and absolutely. buying real estate. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you're not doing that anymore. What do you? This no. is your last week as when this this job ends this week. Well, no, actually, no. I stay on for the foundation half time during the winter. This is oh, new. But as, you don't stay in the house. No, I don't. No, I move back to my house uh, in Surfside, and then what I do for the winter out here. Um, for years, I had a summer job and a winter job. This was strictly seasonal, right. uh, and I was a landscaper. I painted houses. I opened scallops. I did all the you know all the usual things that we do to survive out here in the winter time. And uh, uh, also, for the last ten years, I've worked at Highline during the winter time in the oh, ticket that's office. Right. Yeah, sure you so um, it's been sort of a nice yin and yang. You know, Highline is a much more social thing. I get to see people as they come and go. So it's it's a nice balance. I find. Yeah. I avoid the the hectic side of Nantucket, what it's become in the summer on Main Street. Yeah. Rarely go into town during the summer. Right. Spent a lot of time down on the wharves. I'm more a winter wharf rat because yeah. you know I love being down on the wharves and walking in town in the winter, and it's sort of a nice balance being out here in the in the in the summertime. And it's amazing. I, I mean, I I didn't know this about you, Helen. I'm I, and it was a pleasure to uh, come along with you and, and learn a little bit about this beautiful place that we 
people don't take that much advantage that's of it. Do we? You so know, it, should come out here it amazes me the people that come to Nantucket and they think they've seen it when they've seen downtown or the beaches or whatever. And then this whole world here. And people who live here, people who live here year round. I mean, you know, I think they really ought to first become members of the foundation so they can come on the interpretive walks that I do in the summer, get the maps, and come out and explore, find out about these properties. You know, it's a real Eden out here.